God. Yeah. <laughs> um, look, here's a really extraordinary fact for you. By lunchtime today, Britain's top bosses will have made more money in 2016 than the average worker earns in an entire year. Steph is looking at the debates and uh, whether they're worth it. Good morning, Steph. Mm, yes, morning to you both. We're going to have a debate on both sides about whether uh, bosses deserve that money. But it's a big number, isn't it? It's a big gap there. Morning, everyone. Yes, it's based on research from a think tank called the High Pay Centre. They've worked out that the average salary of a FTSE 100 company boss, so our top 100 companies, is just under £5 million. That, they argue, means that by lunchtime today, those top bosses will, in theory, have already earned over £27,000 this year alone, which is the average amount most people in the UK will make in a year. So is it fair? Well, with me from the High Pay Centre is Stefan Stern and also Kate Andrews from the Adam Smith Institute. Good morning to you both. Morning. So, Stefan, High Pay Centre has done this research. Just tell us why you think this gap is a problem. Well, I think we saw with some research just before Christmas from the CIPD, the attitudes of employees just looking up and seeing their bosses pay almost literally out of sight, a massive multiple of what the average uh, employee is earning. They're, the boss is disconnected from the rest of the organisation. That's the real problem. Their interests seem to be different. The motivations, the incentives for the boss seem to be different from the rest of the workforce. Uh, and it's hard to justify, I think, such a massive multiple. It was never necessary in the past. Uh, we haven't seen these sorts of figures until the last 10 or 20 years or so. And I think it sends a pretty worrying message to the rest of the workforce. What is this, what is this leader really in it for? Kate, you disagree. Tell us why. Well, CEOs are far more important to companies today than they were even 30 or 40 years ago. I think a good example is, say, take a football manager, somebody who is demanded to be perfect, and if you make just a few slip-ups, you lose your job. Yes, these are big salaries, but a lot of these CEOs have legal pressure on them. They have companies that employ thousands of people. They have companies that are in charge of hundreds of millions of pounds, sometimes billions. And if these people make one slip, they could lose everything. And furthermore, these companies can gain or lose value by hundreds of millions of pounds simply by who the CEO is and by the actions that they're taking. But actually, it seems like CEOs are worth it. So what do you make to that, Stefan, that CEOs are worth it because they have a lot more responsibility and their jobs have got a lot harder? Well, we think about the 20th century, two world wars, uh, depression, oil price shock, inflation. Has running a big company really got so much harder in the last 10 or 20 years than it always has been. There's always been technological change. I know we've got these smartphones beeping and flashing at us and putting, and information flows quicker than perhaps it used to do clearly. But I don't think the job has got so much harder. Of course, it's an important job, and I'm not saying that pay will be flat throughout an organisation. There's going to be a hierarchy. There's going to be a certain gap. Does it have to be this big? I don't think so. I don't think it's healthy for the organisation or the, for the leader, him or herself. In, fact. Yeah. in order for the high pay centre to know that, they would have to be looking subjectively at every single big company to know how hard that job of that CEO is. I don't believe the high, center, the high pay centre has that information. Markets have that information. Shareholders and remuneration committees at the top, these are not committees that are just shoving out cash to their CEOs. They want to make a profit and they're trying to pay due diligence to people who are going to bring in that profit yeah. for them. So maybe you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> well, that's, that's the theory of markets if it's a market that's actually working but it reminds me a bit of the house the so-called house price market it was also not working we have some houses massively overvalued while and people can't look up to them and same with the bosses i don't think this is a market that is really working but i don't think it's really a market at all i think it's a system with remuneration committees pay consultants headhunters uh, fund managers all actually in a sense acquiescing agreeing to these very big numbers i think it sort of suits all of them in a way to have these big numbers and i don't think the market as such is really functioning properly. The mm. most important thing I'd like to flag up is that the High Pay Centre in their August report from 2014 said um, in their own report that there was no direct connection between high pay for CEOs and low pay for other workers. If we actually want to address low pay, which I think is a topic that needs to be addressed, I want the High Pay Centre to join with the Adam Smith Institute and talk about the cost of living and talk about taking the low paid out of tax. Today's report doesn't do any of that. It just focuses nothing to address low paid work, nothing so, at all. So coming back to this point which Stefan made about motivation, do you think it doesn't demotivate staff when they see their boss earn 40, 50 times more than what they earn? Again, I think that's incredibly subjective. If you're an employee and you've been given a new job that's been created by an expanding company and you have a great salary and that salary is rising, I have no idea if you feel negatively towards your boss. That being said, there are bad bosses out there, but as we noted, because these companies are focused on making a profit and focused on making money, they don't last very long. The average lifespan of a CEO is significantly shorter than the average lifespan of the average worker over you know, their lifetime. You, know, you don't stay in that CEO role for very long. You have to be proving yourself every step of the way.
final word from you? Well, I think that's partly the problem. I think the CEO gets the job. They know that two or three years down the line, there's a big pot of gold if they can engineer the share price up fast. That's not in the interest, the long-term interest of the employees or the organisation. So I think the incentives are skewed and misaligned. And that's also why the gap is so dangerous to the, for the health and the future of the organisation itself. We could go on about this, couldn't we? <laughs> but we'll have to leave it there, Stefan and Kate. Thank you very much thank for you. your time this morning. I know you're going to be friends when you walk out of here, though, aren't you? I think so. <laughs> that's it for me. It's absolutely fascinating. Thank you very much indeed, both all of you, in fact. Thank you.